Good evening and welcome to News Tonight on Rajya Sabha TV. I'm Tina Jha with the daily roundup of all the major news and events. First up, the headlines of the day. None of our fighter jets would have been shot down if the Indian Air Force had refilled. Assert Prime Minister Modi at a public rally in Jamnagar. Advises opposition not to question the valor of the armed forces. Prime Minister inaugurates first phase of the metro rail project in Ahmedabad, lays the foundation stone of the second phase. Our job is to hit targets, not to count bodies, says Air Chief Marshal B.S. Thanuva. Asserts operations against the terrorists are still ongoing. Armed forces ready to foil any enemy attack, says President Kovind in Tamil Nadu. Presents colours to two Indian Air Force units at a function at Sulur Base near Coimbatore. Vice President M. Mankaya Naidu leaves for two-nation tour of Paraguay and Costa Rica. Strengthening cooperation in bilateral trade, space and solar power sector will be the focus of the visit. And spectacle, music and dance mark nationwide celebrations of Maha Shivaratri. President, Vice President and the Prime Minister greet people on the occasion. President Kovin attends festivities at the Isha Yoga Centre. Prayagraj Kum concludes with the last holy dip in the Sangam. Prime Minister Narendra Modi launched several developmental projects in Gujarat on Monday. Addressing a public rally, the Prime Minister also criticised the opposition for questioning the airstrikes on terror camps, asking them to have faith in the valour of the armed forces. The Prime Minister is on a two-day visit to his home state. Prime Minister Narendra Modi launched a sharp attack at the opposition parties on Monday for questioning his statement that Rafael would have made a difference to the Indian Air Force during the airstrikes in Pakistan. Addressing a public rally in Jamnagar, Prime Minister Modi said if India had Rafale aircraft during the recent airstrike on terrorist camps, then none of India's fighter jets would have been lost. देश आपको गर्व करें जे अद्भुत पराक्रम करूँ शे जवानों ये पराक्रम करूँ शे अने कोई पढ़ देश ने दूं जुए हम मर्दाल नहीं जे हम रोटा रेस में जुए जरूरी पाए मैं हमने कहूँ जो आज ना हमारा वायु सेना पास राफेल होत तो परिणाम जुदू होत अब जेम ने मारी बात ना समझाती होए इम मारो दोस्त भाई Prime Minister Modi inaugurated a 750-bed annexe of the Guru Gobind Singh Hospital and the newly built hostel of the hospital. The Prime Minister also flagged off the Bandra Jamnagar Hamsafar Express through video link and also laid the foundation stone of Rajkot Kanalu's railway line doubling project in Jamnagar. The Prime Minister will also hand over keys of 448 houses and 1,008 flats to the beneficiaries constructed by Jamnagar Area Development Authority. Prime Minister Modi also laid the foundation stone for Vishwa Umiya Dham Temple Complex at Jaspur. In Ahmedabad, Prime Minister Modi launched several development projects. He inaugurated the first phase of the Ahmedabad Metro and laid the foundation stone for the second phase. He also took a ride in the Ahmedabad Metro along with Union Urban Development Minister Hardeep Puri, Gujarat Chief Minister Vijay Rupani and Deputy Chief Minister Nitin Bhai Patel. Metro अहमदाबाद वासियों का बहुत बड़ा सपना वो आज हकीकत में बदल गया साथियों पहले चरण पर तो मेट्रो चल पड़ी है दूसरे चरण का शिलान्यास भी आज हो गया है एक काम खत्म और दूसरे पर काम शुरू ये भी हमारी सरकार की और एक विशेषता है एक हो जाए तो हम सोते नहीं हैं, दूसरे के लिए तैयारी करते हैं।
Prime Minister Modi also distributed golden cards to select beneficiaries of the Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana Ayushman Bharat scheme. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Amid questions and claims about the number of terrorists killed in the Balakot airstrikes, Air Chief Marshal B.S. Dhanova said on Monday that it is for the government to make a statement in this regard. He said the Indian Air Force warplanes hit their intended targets, a fact proved by Pakistan in their response after the Balakot strike. In his first comments since India's preemptive airstrikes on a Jaish e Mohammed camp in Balakot, Indian Air Force Chief B.S. Dhanoa has declined to respond on the death toll in the strike. He said it was for the government to provide details on the number of terrorists killed. What was our target and did we hit our target, sir? <laughs> the target has been uh, clearly amplified by the Foreign Secretary in his statement. Yes. And of course, if he planned to hit the target, we hit the target. Otherwise, why would he have responded? ANI, please. If he had dropped bombs in the jungle, there is no need for him to respond. That statement will be made by the government. No, I mean, we are not, I'm not, Air Force is not in a position to clarify that how many people were inside at that way. We don't count human casualties. We count uh, what targets have we hit or not hit. Time's up in there, please. The bomb damage assessment that is done post a mission calculates the number of the target you've been hit or you've not been able to hit. We can't count uh, how many people have died. That depends on how many people were there. The Air Chief also confirmed that Pakistan used F-16 aircraft during the 27th February offensive against India. If the end user agreement was that they will not use it for offensive purposes, then I think they have violated that end user agreement. Because Sir. we have got pieces of the AMRAAM missile uh, in our territory, which we displayed. And obviously, I think they have lost an uh, F-16 aircraft in that combat. So, obviously, they have been using the aircraft against us. Addressing a press conference in Tamil Nadu's Coimbatore, Dhanoa defended the MiG-21 Bison aircraft calling it a capable jet that has been upgraded. MiG-21 Bison is uh, capable, it has been upgraded. It is not the old MiG-21 BIS. It's got a better weapon system, it's got better radars, better air-to-air -air missiles, a radar warning receiver, shaft flares, whatever it takes to make it, uh, you know, from third generation to 3.5 generation or so. So, it is an upgraded aircraft and uh, we fight with all the aircraft in our inventory. Yeah, and remember the really... initiative is with the adversary. Responding to queries on Wing Commander Abhinandan Vartman, who was captured by Pakistan on 27th February and released on the 1st of March, Dhanua said Vartman would fly a fighter jet if he was fit. How he, whether he flies again or no depends on his medical fitness. That's why post-ejection, uh, he has undergone a medical check. And thereafter, if required, whatever treatment is required will be given to him. Once he gets his medical fitness, and then, uh, then only will he get into a fighter cockpit. No, medical examination and debriefing after that uh, uh, depends on his fitness. If he's fit to fly a fighter, then he'll go back to a squad. If he's not fit to fly a fighter, then he'll become a low medical category till the time he gets his currency. And then he'll go back when he gets his fighter currency back. Twelve Indian Air Force Mirage 2000 jets crossed the line of control last week and destroyed terror camps of Pakistan-based Jaishe Mohammed in Balakot. The airstrike came two weeks after the Pulwama attack. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. President Ramnath Kovind presented colours to two of the Indian Air Force units at Sulur Base in Coimbatore on Monday. The five base repair depot functioning in the Sulur facility and the training center at Hakimpet near Hyderabad have been presented the colors in recognition of their outstanding performances. Addressing the event, President Kovind reiterated India's firm commitment towards peace but added that in case the need arises, India will use all its might to protect the country. Referring to the recent events at the line of control, President said Indian forces reflect our resolve. This fella was on display very recently as the Indian Air Force carried out preemptive airstrikes on a terrorist camp in Pakistan. He further said that the Indian Air Force has over the years grown into a modern, technology-intensive force distinguished by its commitment to excellence and professionalism. He also complimented the personnel and families of the Indian Air Force 
for their selfless sacrifice and service to the nation. Exemplified by their air warriors who stand before us, reflect our firm resolve to defend our nation. Their valor and professionalism was on display very recently as the Indian Air Force carried out preemptive strikes on a known terrorist camp. The Indian Air Force has over the years grown into a modern technology intensive force distinguished by its commitment to excellence and professionalism. Keeping pace with the demands of contemporary advancements, the Indian Air Force continues to modernize in a rapid manner and is in the process of a very comprehensive modernization plan. Defense Minister Nirmala Sitaraman has urged ex-servicemen of the armed forces to reach out to her directly to clarify any doubts regarding the one rank, one pension scheme. Addressing ex-servicemen and family members of soldiers who had died fighting for the country at an event in Dehradun, Sitaraman alleged that lies are being spread through social media platforms to mislead the armed forces about welfare measures related to them. The Defence Minister added that the Modi government has resolved several issues related to the welfare of the armed forces because it believes in real action rather than mere tokenism. हमारे सरकार आने के बाद उसमें जितना भी अध्ययन करना करने के बाद सन 2016 में प्रधानमंत्री जी उसको घोषणा की है आज तक सिर्फ तीन साल पूरे नहीं हुई फिर भी बजट के उनके भाषण के समय माननीय पीयूष गोयल जी ने स्पष्ट एक फिगर बोले कि 35,000 करोड़ 35,000 करोड़ ऑलरेडी अकाउंट में चले गए पूर्व सैनिक का पूर्व सैनिकों के अकाउंट में चले गए कितना 35,000 35,000 करोड़ ये 500 करोड़ का मतलब क्या था ये 500 करोड़ जो पिछले सरकार ने सामने रखे हाँ वो वो आरोपी दे दिया ऐसे शान लेने के बात करने वाले गुमराह करने वाले बात बोलना उसका मतलब क्या था? With a view to extend India's outreach to the South American and the Central American region, Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu will embark on a two-nation vis visit to Paraguay and Costa Rica. In fact, he's already embarked on that visit. This is the first high-level visit from India to both countries. During his visit, the Vice President is scheduled to hold high-level talks with presidents of both countries and discuss on matters like trade and bilateral relationships. The Vice President is also expected to seek their cooperation on supporting India's initiatives such as Solar Alliance. Some, uh, some agreements are also understood to be signed during the visit. India and Paraguay traditionally share warm and friendly ties. Trade is one of the main drivers of relationship with Paraguay. Bilateral trade has increased almost tenfold over the last 10 years. India and Costa Rica also enjoy long-standing relationships of friendship and cooperation which are being strengthened by the growing commercial engagement between the two countries. And for more inputs on the story, we are being joined on the phone line by our Foreign Affairs Editor Akhilesh Suman. Akhilesh, good evening. Considering that the Vice President's visit to Paraguay and Costa Rica is the first high-level visit from India to both countries, it is, of course, very significant. What are going to be the focus areas of this eight-day visit and what do we hope to achieve after, after the visit? Uh, as you know, Tina, that uh, Latin American countries uh, are a conglomeration of 33 countries in a group and they are very important uh, politically and also in United Nations, they are very important. Hmm. And you know that we have a very good relation with Brazil and we have, a, uh, you know, BRICS uh, with uh, Brazil as uh, one of the members of it. So we give much more importance to, you know, uh, Latin American countries. And Paraguay is one country that is very important in our fight against terror. Because uh, many of the terrorist organizations had been using Paraguay as, you know, uh, uh, parking lot of their money, money laundering situations. Hmm. And that are the things that have been uh, uh, one of the India's interests that we should know that how 
money is be, uh, getting you know uh, parked there and we have to ban all those money those channels of money in mm. war against terror mm. other than that you know uh, we have also uh, you know established center of excellence in prague and uh, it is very important for us to have a trade relation because uh, we can have much more trade relation with prague than any other country because that is also very uh, developing country and we uh, are keen to export in those country mm. but other than prague you know that costa rica is important for other reason politically it has been very active in uh, also non aligned movement okay. and also uh, you know we are going to establish a yoga chair in uh, university of peace that has been established by united nations itself hmm. and other than that, that you know that in that uh, uh, university of peace uh, there has been mahatma gandhi studio from the earlier time also hmm. so we have a great connect with costa rica in that way and uh, costa rica is one country that has uh, joined our international solar alliance and they want our much support uh, in international solar lands and in solar energy so that they can become a carbon zero carbon emission country hmm. so uh, politically economically and also strategically these two countries are very important because they can also influence other latin american countries and that is why uh, you know vice president uh, mb kanaidu is going there hmm. so that we can give much more importance to other small countries of the you know latin american conglomerates also you know tina Indeed, Akhilesh, thank you very much for joining us on News Tonight with those details. With that, time for a very short break, but news and updates will continue on the other side. Do stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching News Tonight. A team from the Election Commission of India began a two-day visit to Jammu and Kashmir on Monday. The purpose of the visit is to review the preparedness for the upcoming Lok Sabha elections and the state assembly elections amid the heightened tensions between India and Pakistan. The team of the election commission is headed by Chief Election Commissioner Sunil Arora. The team will meet with officials of the state government, including the deputy commissioners and the district police chiefs, to get a briefing on the security situation in the state. The state has been under the president's rule since December 20, 2018. President Ramnath Kovind attended the 25th Mahashivratri celebrations at the Isha Yoga Center as a chief guest in Coimbatore in Tamil Nadu. President Kovind, along with Isha Foundation founder Jagi Vasudev, planted sac uh, saplings to pay homage to the martyrs of the Pulwama attack. Our president in paying homage to their lives, we pray for peace and harmony in the country. Kun, an energized water body that can enhance one's receptivity. He then proceeded to Adi Yogi where the cultural event began. Adi Yogi is a 112 feet tall bust of Lord Shiva, which was unveiled by Prime Minister Narendra Modi in the year 2017 as part of the Shivratri celebrations. Legends say that Adi Yoga stayed here for some time. I had the privilege to visit Kailas Mansarovar in 2006 and today I am in the presence of the Kailas of the South. Personally, the visit here today completes a spiritual cycle for me. I am experiencing the very same feelings that I had experienced on myself when I visited Kailas months are over. <clears throat> this event that Sadhguru has conceived is an opportunity to experience the grace of Mahasivaratri. There is another connection that comes to mind. It is believed that Lord Shiva helped bring the mighty Ganga to us. And Sadhguru has been among those who are rallying to rejuvenate our rivers. Mahashivratri was celebrated across the country today. Devotees throng temples to worship Lord Shiva. The festival is also known as the Great Night of Shiva and it involves overcoming darkness and ignorance. Mahashivratri was the day when Lord Shiva drank poisonous negativity to protect the world.
Another legend has it that Lord Shiva married Goddess Parvati on this day. The day also marked the last Shahi Snan of the Kumbh Mela in Priyagraj. More than one crore devotees took a holy dip at the Sangam on the auspicious festival. With Mahashivratri Snan, more than 24 crore and 5 lakh devotees have taken a dip during this year's Kumbh Mela. Moving on, at least 23 people were killed in two back-to-back -back tornadoes in the United States' central Alabama on Sunday. The tornadoes ripped through Alabama's Lee County with winds of at least 150 miles per hour. More than 50 people are reported to have been injured and the death toll is expected to rise further. The destruction was caused by a severe weather system that crossed the United States southeast on Sunday afternoon, sparking tornadoes as it headed towards the Atlantic Ocean. News footage showed smashed buildings with rooftops blown away, cars overturned and debris everywhere. Search operations for the missing people resumed on Monday after the operation was suspended on Sunday night due to hazardous conditions. And that's it from us on News Tonight. Thanks very much for your time.